Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft Supply, and we are going to get a start in leather work. You are going to be amazed right off the bat how much you can make with leather. In fact, it's so prevalent in our world, we almost don't notice it. Here's the coolest thing. There is no end to the possibilities of projects with leather. Now, we're going to look at some pictures here, kind of get a little inspiration going. But in these pictures, I'm not just going to drop in, you know, our, our standard leather projects, pen holders, key fobs. No, we're going to look at some cool stuff, some out of the box projects that you can make literally on your kitchen table. In leather, we don't need a big shop. We don't need a lot of equipment or ventilation or electrical. Everything is done with hand tools and they are all inexpensive. Now, here's the biggest point to this whole video. If you take nothing else away from this, take this. Leather is just elements and they are all easy to learn. A few of them we can spend our lifetime trying to master, but you'll be surprised at what you'll be able to do the first time you sit down and work on some leather. Now also too, if you feel like you don't really have a creative streak, you're not going to believe what you're able to make. That creative streak's going to bubble to the surface. You're going to have more projects than you can make in a year. All right, so I'm rolling. I know there's so much I want to say, but whew, we're going to back off a little bit. Let's take a look at our first pick. Let's get a little inspiration going here. Belts, one avenue alone with unlimited possibilities. Shape, design, color, decoration, width, length. The cuffs, mystery braid, cross hatch, again, unlimited. Tassels, four strand braids, and the last item there, the mask. Now I say the mask for last because this is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. We're not having any limit to our possibilities. Okay, so that's a fox. That is simply some leather, some dye, and some acrylic paint. But think of all manner of animal we could mold. But at the same time, let's step that up. Birds, fish, or say mystic, griffin, dragon, all possibilities. Even say maybe a gargoyle. Very cool, but let's take that a step further. Let's don't paint the animal or the bird or the gargoyle. Let's use some kind of a paint scheme, some kind of a design with our paint, or maybe even an abstract design. Cool. Okay, we're getting there. Now, one more step there. Say you've got an Egyptian theme to your home. There's Anubis. Masks as decoratives in your home. Matching paint schemes, alternating paint schemes, paint schemes that match your furniture, okay? And this is not even going into the full line of hardware we could add to that. All right, again, I'm rolling. But you kind of get the feel. There's no end to some of these possibilities. All right, let's do this. Let's go to another pick. These are projects. We're going to step it up a little bit. The briefcase, absolutely handmade, and you can make that on your kitchen table. Knife sheath, guitar strap, again, an avenue, unlimited possibilities. Spur straps, and the sporn. I saved that for last. And any purse, bag, clutch, pouch, same tools, same techniques. Tools inexpensive, techniques easy to pick up. But here's the biggest difference. Your project, your call. You call the color, the shape, the decoration, the whole nine yards, make it yours. All right, there are two things we need to talk about, both weights and types of leather. Now, these are easy to pick up, but it's the foundation of leather work, and these two items are gonna make everything else make perfect sense. So right off the bat, chromium tans or chrome tans. Now, these are our garment and our upholstery leathers, furniture, clothing, car seats, bags. Because of this, usually lower weights, maybe four to five, five to six ounce as a max, and this will make sense very shortly, but also too, because of the end use, usually very supple. Now, the best thing about chromes, beautiful, bright colors that only the tannery can create, gorgeous prints, embossed patterns, no end to the possibilities with the chrome tan. Now, I tend to call chrome tans cut and sews. Now, that's not an industry term, and by no means does that diminish that leather, because it's about 80% of the leather tan in the world today. But that's going to make sense when we jump over to my favorite tannage, veg tan, or vegetable tan. Sometimes you'll hear me just say veg. This is an all-natural tannage. In fact, the recipe here, millennia old. Roman documents mention veg tan leather. All natural. But here's the coolest point. There are so many characteristics here. We can fold it, mold it, carve it, stamp it, dye it, antique it, top coat it, paint it. Oh, again, I'm rolling, but all kinds of options here. Now, veg tan. This is the perfect leather for holster and sheath. The veg tan is not going to react with metals, so therefore no tarnishing 
Whereas the chromiums, high chromium salts, those will absolutely tarnish metals. Weights in veg tan, everything from two to three ounce and up. This is a great leather to stamp and carve. We can form it, mold it simply with a little bit of water, and then we can dye it and finish for some gorgeous, rich colors. So you can see why I love working with the veg tan. It's the perfect leather for the beginner because chrome tans, you can usually only buy those in whole hides or sides, which is half of a whole hide. With veg tan, we start at a side and work our way down. At Weaver Leather, we have some single shoulders and they're gorgeous, very affordable, multiple weights. This is the perfect place for the beginner to start. Now, I mentioned weights. That's what we're gonna talk about now. On the surface, these can be incredibly confusing, but they're really not, you're gonna see. We're gonna talk about three basic weights. In fact, two of them I keep in my shop all the time. The third I have, but it's just a liner weight. I use it once in a while. This is gonna make perfect sense. So let's do this. Let's start here, eight to nine ounce, standard belt weight. One eighth of an inch thick or about 3.5 millimeters. Now this is a great weight to start with because it's such a common weight and we can make so many projects with it. It's not gonna mold as well as our next leather, but this is perfect for belts, holsters, bucket bags, laptop cases, saddlebags, and all manner of projects. Now let's do this. Let's cut that in half. Now we're down to a standard pouch weight four to five ounce, roughly one sixteenth of an inch thick, or maybe 1.75 to two millimeters. But now we can mold tight corners and edges, still durable, but we can really mold that. This is a perfect leather for journal covers, masks, cuffs, sheaths. Now let's cut that in half. We're down to a liner weight. This is a two to three ounce, or roughly a 32nd of an inch, or maybe one millimeter. Now it will take a beautiful mold but it's not gonna be very durable. But great tassels, great braids. Now it's a liner weight. So what I'm going to do is line my holster or my arm guards or my bag or clutch with this. It's gonna bump up that exterior weight and make it look incredibly professional. And that's exactly what we wanna do, make our projects as professional as possible. All right, so we talked about the difference between chrome and veg. Big difference, easy to spot there. We've also talked about weights. No mystery there anymore. We've got three standard weights. Now you can fine tune these. In fact, you're going to, you're gonna make a project that's a little too heavy or a little too light. That's how we learn to fine tune the weights. Okay, that's out of the way. Let's do this, getting started. First off, three tools. Every project, no matter how complicated or simple, starts with three tools. Right off the bat, we are going to need a square, now this is the beginning of every project and you will use this on everything from here on out for patterns and cutting leather. A knife, simple enough. There are all kinds of ways you can go with a knife from round knife to scissors. In all honesty, I love the box cutter. The blades are inexpensive, easy to replace, it's comfortable in my hand, and the best part, it locks. That blade closes so I don't have an open blade on my table. And last, of course, we simply need something to cut on. In fact, plywood will work for you if that's what you have. And in fact, you might have two of the three tools at home. Most of us have a box cutter somewhere in the house and it's a great tool. Now the steel square, that is a definite. We carry one of the best ones I've used, but you will use that on every project from here on out. Great tool. Now, next step, these are five tools. This is kind of a second tier because now we need to punch a hole and we need to set a rivet. We need to connect two pieces together. But like always, these are gonna make perfect sense to you. And at the top of the list, the quartz slab and the revolving punch, the most used tools in a leather shop. Now, a mallet. We can certainly go with a rawhide or a poly, both very durable. Now the punch board, not necessary right off the bat, but that will double as a cutting board and a punch board. And the last, well, we wanna nail two pieces of leather together. We're gonna to use a double cap rivet. So all we need there, a simple hand setter, and some double caps. So at this point, we can make projects that are simple to absolutely complex, and here's a perfect example. We have a project tutorial on this. This is a fringe purse. What a great project. I bring it up now because 99% of this project is either cutting, punching a hole, or setting a rivet. That is beautiful, and it's a great project for an evening, maybe one, two evenings at best. But also, too, that's a good point. If you watch our project tutorials, you're gonna see every one of these tools used over and over. 
They're the foundation of leather work. But at this point, the tools are going to become more job specific. Say we want to set a snap or a grommet or an eyelet. Here's the funny thing. They all set the same way, just a little different tool. So we're going to touch on just a couple of topics here. Get a feel because the point of this video, leather is just elements and they're all easy to learn. So let's do this. I'm going to grab some leather and a couple of rivets and I'll meet you at the quartz. Now with rivets, all kinds of rivets out there, but we're going to deal with the double caps, my absolute favorite. First and foremost, because I can take a post and a cap, I've got a crimp in that post and I can snap that together. That's going to be a big help here in just a minute. Three sizes, roughly quarter, three eighths and a half, give or take, technically seven sixteenths or seven and five sixteenths. But here it is, easy enough. Small, two four to fives, back to back. Step up to the medium, two six to sevens, back to back. And the large, two eight to nines, back to back. In fact, I even have a little extra room there. I could squeeze in another piece if I need to. So let's do this. Let's just rivet two straps together. Now, don't think of just straps because we could absolutely close a pouch without sewing or lacing with rivets and it's going to look great. There we go. All right. Cap on one side, snaps in, cap on the second rivet. Now, I can move my work around on my table without it falling apart. That is very frustrating. Rivet setter, simply a concaved end. Drop that on my cap. There we go. Notice how my, my rivet has impressed just a little bit. That's a good bite. That's going to last for years. And on the back, nice, clean, flat cap. Very professional. So rivets, easy enough. All right, next step, and this is one of my favorites. We're going to stamp a cool little border stamp in a piece of leather. We'll see how easy that is to do. Set up and ready to go. Very nice. Now, we're simply going to do a border stamp. And is that not gorgeous? All right, we've got a groove line. We're going to talk about that or do that here in just a minute. But also, too, I've sunk my stamps in and I've added an antique. We'll get to that very shortly. So with our sample, I've dropped in a groove line. Now, this is for sewing, but I put a groove line on every edge. Really dresses up that edge, makes it look very finished. Now, we're going to case our leather. Now, I always joke, this is simply water, but I always joke, if you have four leather people in a room, you're going to have eight opinions of how you should do it, and, and you're going to hear every one of them. In my opinion, I want about the top three quarters wet, but I want a little dryness back here because I don't want my stamps to be mushy. I want them to be very crisp, and you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, my leather's wet. Notice it's taking just a second for that water to wick in. So I'm going to let this sit for just five minutes, then let's add that border stamp. There we go. Okay, notice our leather's got a very clean, very chestnut look to it. This is ready to stamp. So we are going to add a border stamp. Now, the tools we're going to use, this is a veiner. This literally is for adding the veins into leaves when we're carving. We're going to look at that in just a second, take a quick peek. But also makes a great border stamp. So what I want to do, is I'm going to drop that right in on my border. Look at that. Every detail in that stamp head is visible, okay? I could certainly just walk this across, makes a great border. But what I want to do is I'm going to add in what's called a continuous mule's foot. It's just one of hundreds of geometric shapes. We do use this in the carving though. So I'm going to drop this in, one of my favorite border stamps, because it actually brings the border a little more into the project. Just work these across. And let's just drop in one more to get a good feel for the look. Well, that looks great. Very crisp, consistent, and clean. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now, once you pick up these tools, once you kind of get a feel for using the tools, you can stamp up to the carving. Now, all right, my carving is heavy-handed and a little bit rough, but here's the two biggest points. I love doing it, and I'm happy with the outcome. That's the point. So, we've got stamping, got a little bit of feel for this. So let's jump over to the main table. We're gonna do a little edge work. Again, make our project very finished, very professional. Now, for our edge work, this is gonna make our products and projects stand above everything else out there. Here's what we're doing. 
Now I've got two straps here, all right? No edge work. Looks all right, it's gonna last, it'll work for us. But now we add that edge work in. We've got our groove, I've beveled, and we're gonna do all three. I've beveled my edge. Now I don't know if the camera can really pick this up, but my edge is now rounded, and it is high gloss, smooth. It actually feels nice to my finger. Think of purse straps or gun holsters or knife sheaths. That's all we do. Now we're gonna use a gum track to burnish this, but you can use water, absolutely. This just makes it a little more durable, a little easier to do. All right, so we've got a strap here. This is an adjustable groover. I can adjust this arm out. There's my cutting head. I've got this set at an eighth and marked because I set all of my groove lines at an eighth of an inch unless I'm working more groove lines in deeper. So I'm simply gonna butt this arm right next to the edge of my leather, all right? And I'm gonna come up maybe 40% or 40 degrees, maybe 45, and I'm simply gonna add a little pressure, all right? Pushing too hard, not the point. And I can make multiple passes, but let's don't do this. Let's make, make that line so deep that this becomes a tab and tears off. All right, other side, two good grooves. Okay, <laughs> that tool's easy enough to learn, right? All right, let's jump over to a bevel or an edger. Now, if you think of bevel glass, that's exactly what we're doing. We're knocking off that hard top corner from our edge. So I've got a little V in my tool there. That's where my cutting head is. I'm gonna drop this on my leather. I'm gonna come up about 45 degrees and maybe out about 45. And I'm simply going to push. The tool does the work for me. All right, let's do all four sides. And our back as well. So if you ever have a little bit of fuzz on your edge, your bevel will knock that out. A little bit harder, it's not got that top grain. Okay, so we're just all but there. Now, let's do this. Let's take some gum trag or gum trag acanth. Now, like I said, you can, you can slick wet with water, but the gum trag, it's going to make this a little bit easier and it's going to add a little bit more durability to it. Now I want to be a little easy here because I don't want gum track wrapping around onto my top grain. Now we're going to take what's called a burnisher or a slicker. Easy enough. Multiple sizes for multiple thicknesses of leather. I'm going to drop right down here. We're working with a six to seven. Actually, maybe this middle cut will work. There we go. I'm just going to run that back and forth. Now, pressure, not the point here. I don't want to add so much pressure that this develops a lip on it. I'm just going to go back and forth, smooth and easy. Now, already, my edge is becoming rounded and slicked. So what I'll do is I'll work both sides of this. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful already. Okay, again, I'm not sure the camera can pick that up, but my edge is now rounded, glossed, and actually nice to the touch. So, three simple tools, always inexpensive, durable, but here's the best part, easy to learn, all right? Now we're gonna step over, we've got two more steps we're gonna look at, but this is one of my favorites. I wanted to make sure this is in here. We're gonna add spots because they're inexpensive, easy to set, and they look great. I use these on almost every project. But again, pair of spurs here, don't think of just spurs. Think of leather jackets that you already have you can add a spot in to decorate that, or hundreds of them, or purse, or bag, whatever. You can add these spots to pre-existing projects as well as those you're planning. So let's step over here, and we're going to see how easy it is to set a spot. Now, three ways to set a spot. First and foremost, we have a machine called the Little Wonder, and it really is. It will set all manner of spots, rivets, grommets, eyelets. No, it's not motor-driven, so it will bolt onto your table very affordable. All right, we don't have one. So let's go to our next step. This is a setter. Now these are size specific to our spot. I need to make sure if I have a quarter inch spot, I've got a quarter inch setter. Now, all this is, ooh, come out, there we are. So we've got a post, concaved in, and a throat. That's all it is. So let's say I wanna set a spot right there. Now I'm gonna take this, take my spot, and I'm gonna work it up in there. I'm gonna load my setter throat. I'm gonna set that right down on my leather and close that. But what we need to do, let's do this. We need room for those tines to sink in. So I'm gonna put a piece of scrap under me. There we go, drop that in, very cool. Now I wanna put about 70% of my pressure here and about 30% on my post. Well, cool. Tines sink in, nice. All right, that's not bad. Tines are clean and straight on the back. So what I wanna do is simply bend those over and my spot is set, pretty easy, okay? Now we're gonna step over to the way I like to do it, 
It takes a little more time, but you're going to see a major difference in the outcome. A couple of steps all make sense. Now, this is just a pallet. It's just pieces of cardboard taped together. But this is going to give my blade room to move through the leather without dinging. So, let's take our spot. Let's mark. We're going to drop a spot right there. All right, I'm simply going to press that spot in. And that's going to give me two marks. But let's do this. Let me make them a little more visible for the camera. Okay, so there's my tine holes. I'm going to take my pallet, drop that down, craft knife. Now, this is a sales pitch. Of course, we have the best craft knife in the business, solid brass, very comfortable, very durable. Now, notice too, our points typically match our tines. I don't want more hole than tine. That's going to look awful. So I just want to keep that a little bit tight in there. Now, let's drop our spot in, push it through. Very cool. Notice, very flush. That's one thing I'm looking for in spots. Now, not enough to ding this, but on our pallet, let's just give that a little bit of a hit. Now, there we go. It's sunk in, it's clean, it's flush. Let's flip this over, take my craft knife, and I'm going to bend my tines inward or outward, doesn't matter. Now, last step, let's drop this on our marble. Now, again, not enough to ding my spot, but with my, 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 my pallet, I'm going to give that a good pop. Now, I can run my hand across that. I almost can't feel those tines, so they're not going to snag, and they're not going to grab anything. That's a perfect set. No, no major holes on either side, flush, clean and tight. So, setting spots, how easy could that be? Now, let's go back to our main table because we're almost done here, but we're going to take a minute to talk about some die, some finish, and maybe a couple of end punches. Well, easy enough. Every step, every process, extremely simple. The tools, all easy to learn, durable, and very inexpensive. Now, we've got some points we have not talked about. Die and finish, or setting buckles, or snaps, because in our project tutorials, just about every one of those is covered repeatedly. In fact, in almost every one, I add a top coat, and several, we add die. For those, you can get some great detail there. Now, in punches, we didn't talk about these, but here's a great point, the English point. This simply is going to punch the end on a belt. That's all it is, English point punch. But if you watch the product video on that, there are some cool things we can do with that tool, have nothing to do with a belt. All right, at this point, one more pick. Let's do this and you'll see where I'm going with this. Because now we're gonna look at a wide variety of projects, but here's the funny thing. They're starting to look familiar, recognizable. The spur straps, we know how to set a spot, we know how to set a stamp, we can do our edge work and we can set a rivet. That's an evening project at best. The burgundy rifle sling, right there, that's the stamped border we were working with. A whole array of projects, but here's the funny thing. They're all the same tools, the same techniques, the same decorations. Well, there we have it. Leather is just elements and they are all easy to learn. In fact, every step in that pick, recognizable. But also too, one thing I hope you're starting to pick up from this video is the unlimited creative possibilities in leather work. Literally, sky is the limit. Now, we didn't go into great detail on leathers. We talked some weights and types. But as a beginner, I would suggest what's called a single shoulder. Now, at Weaver, we have some of the prettiest single shoulders I've ever seen. But here's the great part about it. It's veg tan, so we've got all the characteristics, but it's affordable, and that's a major point. Because when I'm starting out, I don't want to break the bank on my first piece of leather. I don't want to be so freaked out over the cost that I'm afraid to dive in goes against everything we're doing here. So, through this video, I hope this gives you a little confidence. Jump in, dive in, have a great time with it, create some beautiful stuff. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.